In this video, we're going to consider a third electrical property known as inductance. We've already talked about resistance, which is a measure of a material's opposition to the movement of charge. We've talked about capacitance, which is a measure of the force associated between two charged particles. And now inductance. Inductance is a measure of the magnetic field that's associated with the moving charge. Now we know that an electric charge, a stationary electric charge, has an electric field. But when we move that electric charge, when you cause it to move, there is a magnetic field created. That magnetic field, or the direction that the magnetic field is oriented, can be determined by putting the right hand thumb in the direction that the charge is moving, and then your fingers curling around in that right hand will give you the direction of the magnetic field. So in this case, it would be something like that if the charge were going in that direction. It's important to understand that the charge has to be moving in order for the magnetic field to exist. The magnetic field dies out as the charge, as the charge stops. Now you can take this wire containing the moving charge and you can coil it about itself and as you do so, the magnetic field in each loop reinforces or adds and strengthens the magnetic field. If you take that coil and wrap it around some core, you've got effectively what is known as an inductor. Each of these coils has magnetic field or has an, a current flowing through it. It's the same current. But in each instance, the magnetic field associated with that charge moving in that coil adds to the magnetic field induced by the other coils, and you have a magnetic field then that is directed along the core of the, uh, of the inductor. The magnetic field is in loops, and the strength of the magnetic field is represented by the density of the loops. We, we, we refer to that as the flux, or the number of loops or lines of magnetic field times the surface area associated with it gives us the magnetic flux. And that flux then is a measure or is the way we quantify it, the strength of the, mag of the magnetic field in the inductor. The symbol for an inductor is this, which is meant to symbolize the, co the coils of wire that uh, are found in the inductor. We find this property of inductance used in a lot of different instances. In some cases, we'll actually add inductors to a circuit for a lot of different reasons that we'll cover throughout the rest of your electrical engineering um, experience. We also have motors that consist of windings within the motor. Those windings create this inductor, which then uses or creates a magnetic field, which we then use to turn the shaft. Motors are used to transform electrical energy into a mechanical energy. You're also familiar with transformers. Transformers consist of two different coils. One coil has fewer windings, and the other coil has more windings, and the magnetic field induced in the primary coil is then carried through to the secondary coil where the voltage across here is then different than the voltage here. And transformers can be used to either increase or decrease voltage. At a substation, you have power coming in at a very high voltage off of the high voltage lines, dropping it down to, typically dropping it down to a um, lower voltage, which is then sent out through the distribution system along power poles that you'll see in your neighborhood. So you bring voltage, high voltage power in to a substation, transform it down using transformers that consist of inductors to lower voltages to, to um, to transport it throughout the neighborhood and then at a pole close to your house you may find transformers mounted on the pole that drop it down from the intermediate voltage down to the 240 volts that goes into your house. Another place you find inductors is on the ignition coil of a car. In, an electric, in the, uh, the electrical system of a car you've got a spark plug. The purpose of that spark plug is to create a spark which of course, in the spark plug, there's a gap. 
And the purpose of the spark plug is to jump a spark across the gap, which causes the, ga- the compressed gasoline to explode. Well, the voltage to jump a spark across the gap is a lot higher than the 12 volts you'll find in your 12 volt system. So we use a, an ignition coil to induce a very large voltage, voltage great enough to get the spark to jump across the gap. The ignition coil is exactly that. It's a coil used to ignite the, uh, the compressed gasoline. Now, as we pointed out, electric charge has an electric field associated with it, which comes from a point and goes to another point charge. But the, elect- the magnetic field consists of or is formed in loops. One way of visualizing these, these loops of magnetic field is to think of them as something like or analogous to stretched rubber bands. As the magnetic field increases, it's like adding more of these stretched rubber bands or stretching the existing bands more so. In either way, as the current increases, the magnetic field increases and we have more energy stored in our rubber bands, if you will. As I mentioned, the magnetic flux is a function of the B field and the density of that B field. We talk about the flux being equal to the product of something known as the permeance times the number of turns in the coil times the current flowing through the coil. Now, permeance is a measure of the core material's ability to conduct magnetic field. The higher the permeance, the better the magnetic field will flow through the core material. Once again, N is just the number of turns, number of wire turns in the in the coil, and the um, current is just the current flowing through the coil that is inducing the magnetic field. The thing that's important to understand right here is that the strength of the magnetic field is proportional to the, the core's material or the core material's ability to conduct magnetic fields, the number of turns, and for our purposes, most importantly, the current flowing through the coil.